this video we'll look at arrays. So we've already seen how data is stored in variables and variables just hold one item of data. They uh, represent a location in memory. Uh, but if we have a collection of data which are all related it might actually be more effective to store that data together. Um, and programming languages offer us a variety of ways to do it um, using different data structures but in particular the one that we're going to look at today is an array. And we'll look at one dimensional and two dimensional arrays. So data structures, they allow us to store more than one item of data under one identifier, so under a particular name. Um, and then we can use that particular identifier to access different items within the data structure. So if we wanted to store the goals scored by four football teams, we could, if we wanted to, create four separate variables for that, like so. However, it will be more effective, or it could be more effective, um, to store that in an array because all that data is related. It's easier to keep track of if it's stored um, in a data structure altogether. So here's an example of um, an array that holds four integers, seven, three, one, and four. And the array has the identifier, has the name team underscore wins. So in an array, each item is indexed given a position number and we can use the index to access each individual item stored in that array. Now remember in computing we start counting from zero so the uh, number seven is at index zero, three is at index one, one is at index two and four is at index three. So therefore if we wanted to actually um, I, uh, access some of the, that data if we wanted to access the first item, for example, we would write down team underscore wins bracket zero. That's the item that's in the zeroth index. Team wins one would uh, access the number three. Team wins two would access the number one and team wins three would access the number four. So you can think of an array as a single row of a table of data. There's your identifier there's your index and there's your elements. So if you are um, a programmer who, who programs in Python, um, you may never have sort of talked about arrays before because Python uses lists. Um, and in theory, they're not the same. So regardless of what language you program in, you must be aware that lists and arrays are not the same thing. So an array is a collection of data which has the same data type. That's the most important thing to recognize. Lists can have lots of different data types within them. But an array has one, uh, has just you know the same data type. So it might be a load of integers, it might be a load of strings. Um, an array uses a static area of memory. Um, so whenever we set up an array, we have to state how big the array needs to be and what type of data it's going to hold so that the computer can prepare the right amount of data in memory for it. Therefore, an array can't grow over time. You can't append to it. You can change what's in the array. Um, so if it had the number seven in index two, then you could change that to a, a different number if you wanted. But you can't add more numbers to the end of it. It can't grow. It's static. Now, a list, on the other hand, um, can contain data that doesn't have to be of the same data type. And lists use memory dynamically. Okay, It means that it uses different areas of memory if it needs to, and as a result can grow. Data can be appended or added to it over time. Now, arrays can also be two-dimensional. Now, in fact, it could be multi-dimensional. You can have arrays within arrays within arrays. Um, but we'll look for we'll look at two-dimensional arrays at GCSE. So a 2D array is really just an array inside an array. So here we've got a two-dimensional array that contains two arrays within it. And we can access the contents of this 2D array using two indices. So t 2D array 0 will access the first array within it. 2D array 1 will access the second array within it. 2D array 0, 0 would access the number 23 because the first indice says which array we're looking at. Well, that's the first array. And the second indice looks at which element within that array we're looking at. Well, the first element is 23. So that's what 
we are accessing when we use 0, 0 as the indices on our 2D array. And 2D array 0, 3 would get the number 4. So again, we're looking in that first array, but it's the fourth position, so the third index, where there is the item number 4. 2D array 1, 1 would be 22, and 2D array 1, 2, for example, would be the integer 6. So, if we created our two-dimensional array like so, this would be our two-dimensional array. This would be 2DIM array 0 and 2DIM array 1. It's just identifying the different arrays within the two-dimensional array. And this item here would be 2DIM array 0, 0. This one will be 2DIM array 0, 1. That would be 0, 2. That would be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. And you can visualize a two-dimensional array as a table of data, and each element will have two indices, coordinates to access the particular item. So the first indice might indicate the row, and the second might be the column. And if you want to carry on with that idea of visualizing, the two-dimensional array is a table. Each array within it is a row, and we can have a look at each cell within the table by using two indices.